today we thought we would show you a tour of our apartment. We live in 186 square feet, so we're uh, considered tiny home livers or tiny space livers. Um, and we do that while we're in the city and we're working our jobs. And this is one of the key critical components to making our log cabin renovation work. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to afford the project. We're gonna show you the entire tour of the space. We're gonna talk about how much the space costs in the DC metro area. And then we'll talk about how it contributes to um, our success with our log home renovation. All right, let's go. Our mudroom, front hall, closet, entryway, foyer, really all those things rolled up into one. So this was originally a single family home and it was cut up into a bunch of different apartments and we live in the smallest one of this set of apartments. So basically we have enough room to throw our shoes or our weights or recycling. And then this is our AC unit over here. So it's really far away from the rest of the room and it has a really hard time like getting into the rest of the apartment, but that's it over here. Next space that we kind of set up on our own using alpha shelving products from the container store um, is just basically like a shelving unit to kind of capture all of our stuff as we come in the door. We put like shoes and stuff down here and just like other storage, like paper storage and stuff up there. So not too much stuff, mostly just like a resting place for some of our things, using it as kind of like a bookshelf. Then over here is our huge bathroom. So tiny, look at the size of this door. It is really small. So this is our bathroom. It has a super small uh, sink in here. We have a medicine cabinet and then something, a storage over the top of the toilet. So we have some storage in here and then some stuff down here, but not that much. And then this is our shower. So there's not room for a bathtub. So it's just a shower and um, that's about it. And a little window pointing towards the neighbor's house. So again, super tight quarters in here. And then, welcome to the living room. I know it doesn't, it's not very far to go anywhere in here, is it? So we put a couch in here. This is where we basically relax in the evening or do like computer work. Um, we just have this little table right here to use. We don't have a dining area of any kind, no like eat-in area. So we just, um, just eat on the sofa here. Um, and then you can see that like we're on like a main road in this community, so it's kind of loud. So we have, uh, you know, these curtains, which are light blocking curtains. And then we have other blinds just to kind of keep some privacy and like keep the noise down. So that's our living room. And then like three more steps over here is our closet. So this is our closet. And again, we've used the alpha shelving from the container store. I really like it just because it's easy to configure and um, just really easy to install and it's easy to use like these little dividers to uh, divide up all our stuff. So this is all of our stuff, both Gabe's stuff and my stuff together in our closet. We even have like kitchen stuff in here for extra storage, for extra room. And uh, we have like coats back here and Gabe's stuff down there, my stuff up here. And then like this is all of our folded stuff together. And this is actually a bigger closet. So we have been on our small living journey for several years now. We started out in an apartment that was 510 square feet and the closet in that apartment was actually just this big. So I know that because I use the same alpha and it's the same size. So it was only this wide and we had even less space and we still fit all of our stuff in there. So this is actually a much bigger closet even though this apartment is only 186 square feet. Uh, so we went from 510 square feet with a really tiny closet to 260 square feet with basically no closet and we just have like a hanging rail and then now we're in 186 square feet and we have this almost normal size closet. The issue with this closet is it's really not closet depth size so you can see that like some of our stuff is like turned sideways and that's because the closet actually isn't deep enough to be a real closet for hanging clothes. So another great reason that we use the alpha for a lot of the folding stuff. That is all of our clothes. And then now three more steps. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> 
So we got this like little kitchen island from Ikea. We actually used it in our 260 square foot apartment. Um, it's worked out really well as a divider for this room because basically it's just one big square. We're just making up places as we go along in here. Um, so we have some storage underneath here. We only have like four drawers and then the under the sink storage and then these cupboards up top. These ones up here and like those up there only gave uses because I can't even reach them. So we have, you know, just our glasses and stuff up here. And then really this is our pantry and food storage up here. And then all of our dishes are underneath. So that's it. That's all we have. All of our pots and pans are just hanging again. A lot of use of Elsa here in this apartment. So a lot of our pots and pans are just hanging right here. That's easy storage out of the way. We do have like some cast iron and some larger pots that we try to put in the closet or sometimes they just end up on the stove. Um, the re really funny thing about this kitchen is again, in the 510 square feet apartment, we had small apartment size appliances. In the 260 square foot apartment, same thing. We had maybe a full size refrigerator, but a really small stove. This is a full size stove that you would see in a normal house. And so using it in 186 square feet is very, very interesting. So we have a larger closet than we had before. Now we have this like super large stove and we also have a full size uh, refrigerator. So all of our tiny spaces have kind of been different, but um, it's really interesting that they built this super kind of normal size kitchen in a really, really small space. Um, this is our Berkey water filter. The water here in Alexandria is fine, but we filter it anyway. And then really like less than one step and now we're in the bedroom. <laughs> so this is a true studio apartment. This is a full size bed. Uh, there's a really tiny end table over there for Gabe. And then there's a, just a normal bedside table over here. But um, yep, this is where we sleep when we're here working in the city. And that really is the 360 degree view of this tiny, tiny, tiny space. And we've been living in this apartment for over um, two years. So we've been living here for two years. In that time, uh, the really, it's really interesting that the DC metro area is super, super expensive. The houses in this community are, all the houses across the street are over a million dollars. Um, the rent in this area can get quite high. So the reason that we chose a tiny, tiny space is because we wanted to pay low rent. So our rent for this apartment, which is again a studio, it's 186 square feet inside the Beltway, close to DC, close to the Metro, super close to our work and a great commute is $1,150. So I know like for some people watching, like that's still a huge number and it's really, really big. Um, but you know, it's a really small number compared to what a lot of other people pay. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and he was saying that like for his apartment that he was renting, which is like a one bedroom, he was paying like $2,400 and that's like one person living there. So that's kind of like the average in this area. It can be really, really pricey. Um, so we're super grateful to have this space and that really is what helps us uh, fund our log cabin restoration and just like living small and living minimal and not buying too many things helps us fund really all the plaster that we need to buy and lime wash and uh, work on our projects out there. So we live very intentionally here in the city and we have a very small footprint, partially because it helps us with a log cabin renovation, but also because we super enjoy these types of challenges. I think that 500 square feet was great. Like we really adapted to that very well. 260 wasn't bad either. 186 is really, really, really small. So when we go to the cabin, we feel like it's a mansion. It's like 800 square feet there. Um, and I know that a lot of people would consider 800 square feet super small, but uh, compared to this, it's super big. So I guess it's all relative. So that's it. That's the entire space. 186 square feet, super small, but the positives are you're never more than five feet from coffee or really each other. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. If you have any questions or comments about how we live in a tiny space or really how we fund our log cabin restoration, please leave them below. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. We would love you to join us on our journey and keep watching with us.
Thank you.